I've made tons of videos about red light therapy and how it can help our skin, but I was fascinated to see some studies where it was used to improve eyesight. I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. I want to explain how red light therapy can potentially help our eyes. So red light therapy has already been approved as a treatment for macular degeneration, but studies have shown red light can also help with glaucoma, retinitis pigmentosa, lazy eye and diabetic retinopathy. But can can it actually help us to correct poor vision as we age? There's two studies I want to mention. The first was by Professor Glenn Jeffrey from UCL in London. He published a study on 24 adults over a two week period. They were exposed to three minutes of 670 nanometer red light from a small LED device in the morning between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. once a week. There was a significant improvement in color vision of between 70 to 20% of those in the study who were over 40 years old. The professor stated in the near future a once a week three minute exposure to red light could transform eye care and vision around the world. The second study was done in China on 112 children with myopia. That's when distant objects appear blurred. Half of them were given a red light device and the other half were given a sham device. They were given red light for three minutes twice a day for six months and and this significantly reduced myopia progression among the children who had the real device. So how does red light therapy work? There's been decades of research on red light therapy on everything from skin rejuvenation, hair growth, pain and inflammation to depression. Red light boosts ATP, adenosine triphosphate in our cells. The mitochondria are a part of each cell which take nutrients and oxygen and convert them into ATP, which is energy the cell can use. This process is called the METC or the mitochondrial electron transport chain. Recent research suggests that mitochondrial dysfunction may be the cause of many chronic diseases and autism. It's an area of research we're only just starting to understand. ATP production takes a nosedive as we age, so red light therapy is a great way to help our bodies to stay healthy. The more energy a cell has, the more efficient it can be. So if you imagine a hair follicle cell, if you give it red light, it has more ATP, which means it will grow thicker, fuller hair, like a more youthful hair follicle cell would. So how can this help our eyes? Number one, the retina has the highest concentration of mitochondria in the body. It also has the highest metabolic demand in the body. Our eyes need immense amounts of energy to perform optimally. And as we get older, that energy declines and leads to poor eyesight. Red light therapy boosts the ATP in the retina, thus improving eyesight and eye function. Professor Jeffrey, who did that first study, said using a simple LED device once a week recharges the energy system that has declined in the retina cells, rather like recharging a battery. Secondly, red light protects the METC process that I just mentioned, which deteriorates as we age, which is why we end up with much less ATP in our eyes. But what can also happen is that instead of the oxygen getting turned into ATP, it turns into reactive oxygen species, ROS, which damages lipids, proteins, DNA, RNA, and even damages the METC itself. This is also known as oxidative stress. By increasing mitochondrial function with red light therapy, you can hopefully avoid this. Thirdly, red light is known to improve circulation. Lack of blood flow to the eye and optic nerve can lead to eye illnesses like glaucoma and macular degeneration. Another theory is that poor eyesight could be due to lack of oxygen in the eye and red light boosts that oxygen with improved circulation. Number four, red light therapy has proven anti-inflammatory effects. Diabetes can cause bleeding inside the eye and retinal swelling and red light helps treat that as well. It's even been approved to use on eyelid styes. So is it safe to use red light on our eyes? Professor Glenn Jeffrey said 670 nanometer long wave light is not that much greater than what's found in the natural environment. By that he means we would be getting 
that wavelength of light from walking around outside in normal daylight. So when it comes to your eyes, you don't want to mess around. Always consult a medical professional if you have any questions or doubts. And remember, this video is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. Only use LED devices and never laser devices. There are mountains of research and studies on red light therapy and eye health showing it's safe, but there are three vital factors you should consider. Firstly, the wavelength. So when you look at a red light therapy device on the market, they will state the specific wavelength that they emit. The majority of these studies conducted on red light therapy and eye health have used red light around 670 nanometers. So nanometers is the measurement they use to measure wavelength. Mitochondria have specific light absorbent characteristics, so you would want a device which has a wavelength of around that. Many devices such as this current body mask have two wavelengths combined, both red light and also infrared light as that has benefits like boosting collagen and elastin in the skin. But in this case, we're only interested in the red light and not the infrared light. That has not had enough studies to confirm that it's safe for our eyes. When you use infrared light devices, you always need to use goggles as it's not meant to treat your eyes. Some devices like this best call device, which I made a review about, can actually switch between the red light and the infrared so you can choose. But apart from the wavelength, you also need to look at the irradiance or the power of the device, which is measured in milliwatts per centimeter squared. So a full body panel will probably be more powerful than a little small handheld device. Secondly, red light therapy requires very limited exposure to be beneficial to our eyes. These studies had very short, limited sessions. It should also be done in the first three hours after waking. So when Professor Jeffrey conducted the same test in the afternoon, the results were zero improvement. Thirdly, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who's a Stanford neuroscientist, said, we have a blink reflex. You should always blink or close your eyes if you feel you need to. Never force yourself to stare at a bright light source. Even if you close your eyes, the red light will still be effective. It will still go through your eyes. Lids. The last thing you want to do is damage your eyes. So what device should you use? So there are no specific eye red light therapy devices on the market yet, but there are many devices out there which have the 670 milliliter wavelength or near. But the UCL study specifically used quite a low power device with an irradiance of just 8 milliwatts per centimeter squared. But they did a previous study with 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared too, and both levels were completely safe with no adverse reactions. So if you want to follow the study exactly, you've got two options. So you may want to consider getting a device which has a dimmable option like this one, which is from Rouge. It has plenty of other benefits too. It's third party tested. It has a 60 day money back period, but this is the only one I could find that you can dim the power like that. If you click the link below, you do get a saving on this device. The manufacturer told me if you want to recreate the exact irradiance of that UCL study, then dim it down to 5%. That will give you an output of eight milliwatts per square centimeters. If you want to try 40 milliwatts per square centimeter, then dim it down to 20%. So that's one way to have complete peace of mind that you are replicating that study exactly. Or if you have a regular device, like the one that I use from Best Call, which has a 95 milliwatt per square centimeter irradiance, which is higher obviously than the study, doubling the distance will quarter the output power. So instead of holding it against your face, you want to leave a distance. So this diagram shows what I mean. Obviously moving the device back is a less precise way of reducing the power. So my experience, over a two week period, I exposed my eyes to red light for three minutes per week. I didn't have any adverse effects, apart from finding that if I did this too late in the evening, it would interrupt my sleep. The only way to know whether this has done anything is to get eye tests. So 18 months ago, I had a myopic prescription of minus 0.5 in my right eye and minus 0.25 in my left eye. So one week after using this device, I retested and there's a very small decline of just 
minus 0.05 in both eyes, which is hardly any change at all. So considering I'm 48 years old and most people I know around my age need glasses, then I think that's pretty amazing. So whether this device did actually um, correct or slow down or stabilize my eyesight, I can't really say. But this is a fascinating area of research. If you've used any red light device for eye health, please comment below and let me know. If you've got any questions, please put them below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you found this helpful and I'll see you next time.